Hey guys, welcome back to Total Tech, and today we're going to start our new series in machine learning and how you can get started right now uh, with machine learning super easily. Um, so if you guys are new to the channel, this is just a little tech channel to give some tips about tech stuff that I, I found interesting. Hope you guys found it useful. If you do, like and subscribe. Greatly appreciate it and help the channel out. Alright, so today we're going to talk about a little package called h2o.ai. It's not really little, it's a big machine learning package that is kind of pre-created um, to allow you to quickly get started with machine learning. Um, so instead of you implementing the algorithms, um, you can actually just have these algorithms already implemented for you and you can actually utilize them to do the machine learning aspect of it. Um, so the way we're going to get started with this is that first we're going to need to make sure that we have Java installed on our system. So I'm going to go over here to, um, I already have pulled up here, the Microsoft OpenJDK. So OpenJDK is the now open source um, Java version because Oracle decided to make their Java not open source. Um, and we're going to go here and download the version that is 17.0.3. So that's the version that we're going to need here. Um, you can do older versions, but honestly, I would probably just deviate towards using the newer versions because they're the long-term support versions. So I'm going to download this MSI right here. Download it. I'm going to open it once it's downloaded in the folder. And I'm going to basically install um, this JDK. It's going to ask me if I want to install it. Yes. And it's going to install Microsoft open JDK. So we're going to make sure that this is actually installed correctly. We're going to open PowerShell and then we're going to do Java dash version. And we're going to see right here that um, we have the correct version here, 17.03, which is the long-term support version as of uh, 2022, which is what we wanted. And that is exactly what we wanted. Okay. So that's good. And while that's going over here, we're going to go over to H2O website and download the jar file. So this website, I will also link down in the description below. Um, so you guys don't have to kind of go searching for it, but it's pretty easy to find. You just search H2O on Google, you'll find it. Um, so we're going to download that, and this is a pretty big jar file. I'm going to save it here. Yeah, do you want a little, do you want a free ebook? I guess you could sign up for a free ebook too. Um, but H2O is actually pretty great. They're open source, and they have a lot of great white papers on just machine learning in general. Um, so I recommend you going there and kind of checking out the more nitty gritty of how algorithms are implemented. Like if you want to gradient boost machine as opposed to distributed random forest and how that's implemented. All that information is on their website. It's very useful. Um, but most people don't have time to kind of get in the nitty gritty like I did for my doctor degree. So um, we're just going to show you how to get quickly started. Okay, so as that's downloading, I'm also going to go over to the UCI machine learning repository and download this Iris data set. So this is kind of just like a generic data set that a lot of people use to um, kind of like sh show the principles of machine learning. So you can go here, download this data set. So I'm going to download this. And this is uh, iris.data, but it's actually a CSV file, so I'm going to call it .csv and make it a file type. Save that. I'm also going to download the the names file, which is also a CSV file. Download that. And then this is now downloaded. So first thing, we're going to go to this one, and we're going to unzip this. And we're going to extract it to our location. I'm just going to extract it in the downloads folder, but you could extract it to wherever you want. And then once that is done extracting, well, we're going to head over to PowerShell and we're going to basically run our cluster. So I'm going to go here and this is my file path right here. And this is the jar file that we're looking for. So I'm going to CD to that file path and to run the cluster, which is our machine learning cluster. We're going to just do Java dash jar H2O. I have it pre-populated here. Got jar and hit enter. And this is going to run, um, the cluster on our local system. So what this machine learning cluster is, is basically going to be the platform that actually does all the computation for a machine learning algorithm. Now it's important to remember that H2O is in Java. So this is all done in memory. So that means it uses your RAM on your system. On my system, I have about 16 gigabytes. Um, and you know, you'll be bottlenecked by your CPU speed and all that stuff too. But um, on my other system, I did a 30, I had a 32 gigabit, two gigabyte system, sorry and also a 64 gigabyte system. So um, it kind of depends on your data set, what you're trying to do and how like nitty gritty you want to get into machine learning. But obviously more RAM gives you more resources, which allows you to do these algorithms more, um, train them longer basically to so get better results, but also kind of train more of them at the same time. So that's kind of the, um, the background to that. So we've downloaded uh, H2O, the jar file. We've initiated our cluster. So let's take a look at our data set. So I'm going to go here to the data file. I'm going to open this with Notepad++. You can open it in Excel or whatever. It's up to you. And I'm also going to open this iris.names. So you can see the data set here. We have a bunch of numbers and also the kind of the type of iris that we're looking at. So um, these numbers, we kind of need to know what the 
values are four. So we're going to actually insert a column uh, header, kind of header row, and this names file is going to tell us what the, those attributes are. So the first row is going to be sepal length, second row is going to be sepal width, sepal length, comma, width, comma, and I think the next one is pedal length and pedal width. Yeah, pedal length and pedal width. So all this is doing is I'm, I'm basically annotating the data set really quick to make sure that um, we know which columns we're dealing with once we import the data into H2O. Um, and then this last column is going to be flowers. So I'm going to save that. Now, we have our um, actual cluster running. And the great thing is that we can open it up on a browser. So if I click this link right here, localhost, uh, the port is 54321. Very, very unique port. Um, and this is our framework, and this is how we can get started with machine learning. This is H2O running in the background. Very, very useful. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first import some data files. So I'm going to hit data, import files. I'm going to go to that location where I had the iris data set, which is in my downloads folder. Let me just go to that, iris.data.csv. going to import that file, add the file, import it. Then I'm going to parse these files. Set up the pars, that looks right. Sepal width is the column. Length width, length width, petal length width, flower, that looks good. The first row contains column names, that's correct. And then we're gonna hit pars. And what this can do is this is gonna load this into a data object called irisdata.hex. So if I click that, this is our hex object and we actually view this data in H2O. And this is the same data that we have, um, you know, open in our notepad, so, you know, the length is 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0 0.2, and it's iris cetosa. So if we over, go over here, you know, this first row, 5.1, 3.5, 1.4, 0 0.2, iris cetosa. Same exact data. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to actually split this data set. So what we're going to do is split, and we're going to do, let's do a 0 0.8 to 0 0.2 split. And we're going to create this split. So the 0 0.8 is going to be our training set, and our 0 0.2 is going to be our prediction set. Um, so if I go over here and click model, you can see all the models that we can train. Um, so these are all pre-made models. You can do a general learning model, you can do a distributed random forest, deep learning model, whatever you want. Um, but I'm gonna show you something that's really simple and that's to do uh, what's called an auto ML. So what auto ML does is it'll run all of these models and train a bunch of them and then kind of give you the best option, right? So I'm gonna click this and we're gonna select our 0.81 for our training set. And the response column is going to be our flower column. And that's basically what we're predicting for. So if I zoom in here and kind of show you, these two are the only um, actual ones that we need to have, these two call, and everything else is optional. And there's a lot of different hyperparameters and stuff like that that you can do in H2O, but um, this is very useful for um, you know what you're going to be doing very quickly and then also can get this into production environment very quickly too. So we're not going to exclude any algorithms, but I am going to limit the runtime to about two minutes just for the sake of this. Um, so runtime max seconds, just because uh, the default runtime is an hour and we don't want to do this for an hour. So you can do it for an hour and I would recommend you doing it for your actual production models a lot longer because the, the training will be better. Um, you can also set things like seed. So every model is generated from a random seed, but that makes it really difficult to reproduce a model. So if you just happen to get a good seed that was a good model, then you don't really know what that seed is. You'd have to like, there is a way to get back and get that seed, but it's just uh, more simple. So I'm gonna set a seed to one, two, three, four, just to make it easy. And our sort metric is gonna be, I'm gonna do log loss. So log loss is gonna be how we sort our leaderboard and how we know um, you know, which algorithm is best. So that looks good. Um, we're gonna do cost validation too. I'm not gonna keep any of these models or cost validation metrics um, just to save memory. Um, and then we're gonna build the models. So as you can see here, it's running an AutoML and it's already built a couple models. So now it's on uh, a gradient boosted machine and a stacked ensemble. So if you guys don't know what a stacked ensemble is, you should look into that too. It's kind of like a, a, a meta learner that uses a bunch of the algorithms to make a super algorithm. Um, so as this is running, um, we can kind of see in our console that it's actually doing all of this training here on PowerShell. You can see the cluster here. It's running like really quickly, obviously, um, all these training sets. It's running through the data set to make sure that um, it's training it correctly, and it's also doing cross-validation to make sure that we're not fitting to the data set too, too hard, but we're actually, um, you know, generalized enough where we can predict hopefully on d data that the model's never seen before. Um, so I'll show you once this is done how we can kind of like um, check this and make sure that the models are working correctly and um, predict on kind of the new data set that we split. So if you remember, we split a data set into 80 
percent um, for the training and then 20 percent that we're going to predict on to test and kind of validate that our model works um, so a couple things i want to show you really quick while we're waiting um, you can also um, go here and uh, export the model as a, a java object file and so if you have a model that you like and that you want to keep you can export it and save it as a file and then import it back in later to use or use in a production environment if you actually want to use it um, a lot of times people will you know, do this several, you know, thousands of iterations, get a lot of different models, and then you kind of pick out the best models and then use them in aggregate to get, uh, hopefully, the best predictions possible. And, you know, the goal is obviously to get as close to 100%, but realistically, most most things, unless you have a ton and ton of data, you're very, you're, you're not going to get kind of like above 90% for kind of a lot of real world stuff, but it really depends on what data you're working with. Like biology stuff is like very, very low. Um, the stuff that I worked on for my PhD was like, you know, if we got like 0 0.65, we were like happy, very happy. Um, so that's kind of just like the general gist of it. Okay, so it looks like we're done. So if I click view here, I think we can view, okay, looks like we cannot. So let's, let's list all the models. And you can see all these models here that we've run. And uh, I'm also going to list uh, the grid search results. And so if I click on the grid search results and look at this one right here, we can kind of see the uh, the scoring history, and you can see you know how how the scoring went and like what the log loss was for that. And um, so let's let's validate one of these models, right? Let's let's click on uh, like this gradient boosted one, for example, model three. I don't know, it's model three. So it looks like here um, it shows us that the log loss is going pretty well, and that the most important variable was the pedal length for determining um, how good it was. So this is the training metrics. Wow, pretty good. And then this is the actual cross-validation metrics. So when you're generalizing, so still pretty good, like 0 0.95, 0 0.98, 1.0 for iris cetosa on precision recall. That's that's pretty good. Um, so let's see if we can use this model here to um, predict on our data set. So let's go uh, to here and score, and then we're going to hit predict. And then we're going to do, this is going to be prediction, and then we're going to select the model that we wanted. So let's select that GBM model three that we had seemed like a pretty good one and then we're going to train on the 0 0.2 data set and we're going to predict and so it's going to predict and tell you how well that the predictions worked and it looks like the predictions actually still worked pretty well not as well because you know it is new data but it it still works pretty well like we have a precision recall of 1.0 for higher cetosa still and then for versicolor and virginica is uh, 0 0.89 0 0.86 so that's like pretty decent it seems like this model's definitely bent more towards uh, you know determining iris setosa which it's possible that we just have more data in iris setosa in the data set um, but this is kind of like an example of how you guys can get really quickly started in some machine learning you can play around with all these algorithms um, hopefully that was useful for you guys um, if you found it useful like and subscribe share it with people and um, i'll kind of go into more different machine learning things we'll figure out how to do this stuff in r and python and i'll make videos on that and hopefully this series will you guys will find useful and we'll get more into the nitty-gritty stuff. And yeah, hope you guys have a good time.